Welcome back, welcome back, MTG Joe here. Uh, we're about a week away uh, from the new set coming out. I will be part of the early streamer event on the 15th. Uh, so I'm gonna be posting some deck lists, spoilers, and tomorrow. I've already put a bunch up on Aether Hub that I'll tweak slightly with the new cards coming out uh, that have been really spoiled afterwards. Uh, this weekend I'll be doing a couple deck tech videos. Uh, so I'll get those up on YouTube, just a couple of thoughts, stuff like that, and just really communities crowdsourcing some deck ideas you'd like to see in the early streamer event being played. Um, if you do have any decks, any kind of brews, particularly Mutate, I can't get that great of a deck right now. Um, but any kind of things that you've kind of put together as well, uh, do drop a note with a deck list and I'll uh, see if I can get those all played. So kind of give you a sneak peek of your deck idea before we get the full set released uh, next week. Uh, in the meantime, I've been playing some brews just to kind of see what's fun, what's different, what could kind of work. Um, so we did like the budget mono blue list, which can be a flash list that you can kind of convert into. This one here is just more of a fun deck I wanted to try out. It is a mono black control deck that is using Golos. So combination of Chromatic Lantern and Golos lets you activate Golos each turn. Uh, also, we have a couple of temples to help scry part of our control package, but have them all splash for one of the colors. So you can kind of work like that. Uh, you also have Karn the Great Creator that can go and get you either a Golos or a um, Chromatic Lantern out of the sideboard, as well as some other useful artifacts. Um, the rest of the deck's kind of control esque shell. Uh, Cling to Dust is a card that I was quite impressed with. can exile like an Uro or something that's in the graveyard. Uh, and if it's a creature, you gain three life, otherwise you draw a card, and as we get cards in our graveyard, we can escape it back. Uh, Fenlurker, Agonizing Remorse, so eight discard spells for two mana. Uh, we have removal in the form of Murderous Rider, Eat Extinction, Ritualist Soot, uh, kind of packaged up like that. I also have a Massacre Girl. Um, try Nashiok Main, she might be more of a sideboard, or he or she. Um, a sideboard card, um, but it seems pretty good just to exile opponents' graveyards right now. Um, and then Golos, obviously, trying to activate it for 7 mana to get a bunch of free value. Uh, of note, Ritual only really hits these small things, which will be probably, like, traded off anyways. Gonna try off, as well, Dread Presence, uh, whenever a Swamp and there's a battlefield, either draw a card, lose a life, or, uh, deal 2, gain 2 to a permanent, or a player. Uh, a couple Lilianas and an Ugin on the top end, so that kind of wraps up the whole package. We do have a blast zone for utility land and four castles. Um, sideboard wise, pretty simple. Uh, Durf's figure versus the aggro matchups, particularly red. Uh, Duress versus control -y decks. Some noxious grasps when needed. Then we have a cage that stops like the escape package, uh, cat oven, stuff like that. Uh, another way to exile the graveyard if we need to. Uh, some spy glasses. Uh, to turn off big thing or like turn off walker stuff like that chromatic lantern golos then we have a meteor golem that can be used to fetch something up, or to destroy something and then stone coil is a good way to stop like hydrate crisis or um, dream trawler stuff like that so we'll give this a shot I'm just gonna play in ranked traditional play we'll fire it up and go from there see how it goes just threw this together now, so I haven't actually tested anything with it, but it'll be kind of a good idea. I saw this deck um, played out in Historic uh, that used like Field of the Dead and a bunch of different black producing sources, um, and it was pretty cool. Uh, this hand's not doing much. Sure. I'm going to hedge that we're playing a creature-based deck, that this Ritualist Soot would be good. Okay. This is sacrifice, then these will be good. Um, claim, claim, mayhem devil. Just get rid of a devil here. So they don't have a play on two. We can wipe on three. Uh, hopefully, draw into a land there. Perfect. So they go Mayhem Devil here, I sweep, and then hopefully draw a fifth land, and then play out Golos. Would have preferred that, obviously, last turn.
Drawing this isn't bad because it gives us one of our other sources. I don't know mana wise, like I can use this to get rid of this mayhem devil. Actually, they're pretty low on resources. Now let's go Los this turn. Try to catch them uh, slipping. Uh, Blast Zone's actually interesting here because it's another pseudo removal, but I think we just set up a scry and start getting our colors. Perfect. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So I could Chromatic Lantern and Ritual Asset next turn. Okay, so they can't kill us this turn. That's unfortunate because they're going to be able to draw some cards now. So play out the Lantern, Ritual away here. Some really delayed triggers. And then just play out the Scry Land. So if they don't kill Golo somehow, should be pretty good position. Like they can give this haste, but they need two creatures to kill Golos. They have one. Do they have another one? Claim your own priest works as a way to uh, give it haste. Okay. Sweet. So let's activate Golos here. Liliana's actually really cool. So we'll hold off on the blast zone. If I were you, I'd um, <laughs> actually, you know what? I should have down ticked on this. So I'm going to attack in. Because the thing is they're going to claim my zombie token here. And then sacrifice it. Along with the cauldron familiar. I was hoping for a little bit better flip. Two lions wasn't the best. So they can attack three into Liliana if they want. Ah, that's unfortunate because they get three plus three on the sack. So they'll probably target it all at Liliana. So in retrospect, going... Down tick on Liliana probably was better. Like we lost our Golos guarantee, but we were going to lose it anyways. It would have cleared their board. Okay, we did get a Rider. Hopefully they don't follow this up with like an oven. Of course they have oven. Um, so here, let's uptick Liliana. So they will get to sacrifice one of these. So I'm going to do the Mayhem Devil first because they won't get as many sacks out of it. So they can sacrifice the Devil. 
to prevent me from getting the second half of this. So I'm going to do this now just because I want to have out another blocker on defense. With the lifelink it can become relevant. Plus if they kill anything then my Liliana draws me more cards. So they don't bring back the cat. Hopefully it's not another Mayhem Devil. I think we've gone through three already. Yeah, three Devils. Something like Croxa would also be bad. We just blew through two Murderous Riders. So they got Woe Strider. <sighs> That's super annoying. So this is the way we were trying to stabilize. One five six seven eight nine not enough to golos and activate it i guess we need like a ritual of soot but even then it's not the best so let's sack this sack that let's see what we draw sideboard we get um mortis figures If we were able to hold one of those, we would have probably been fine, but the double claims there hurt us. Interesting they did that. Instead of just sacking to there, they would have been able to get an extra cat activation. Well, I guess they can bring back two cats. Okay, you know what? This is annoying. Don't need to resolve to every trigger there. So I can eat to extinction. See what's on top. If I could like, oh, I can't even draw a card. I can draw but then I only have two mana, so I'm probably dead anyways. They keep it on top, which doesn't bode well. here they can just pop these out so they pop one out it drains us to four they attack for two and then they sack and do their thing um so disfigures we want i still think we keep karn and then just go for the cage that way um ashiok's good in this matchup cling to dust is decent Masker Girl's fine. Ugin's fine. Three cuts. Is it crazy to get rid of the Murderous Riders? Actually, cut these Remorse. Don't really want the discard that way. At least these block. 
Like, they can steal them, but they're still blockers, at least. Um, I can cut the third for a Stone Coil Serpent. It can just be another blocker. Probably just do that. It also has protection from uh, Mayhem Devil and Croxa, so it can block both of those for us. Play first. Uh, probably fine. Masker Girl could help us catch up. We can take a card out of their hand and then I can start pumping up this blast zone if needed. Cat on one. That's actually good because we can go Masker Girl on uh, turn four. Of note as well, this goes into exile, not graveyard, so they can't escape from that. So, Temple of Malice away. If they offer the trade, I'll take it. Okay, that Priest. Ritual is also nice. They might have brought in like Embrace Shieldbreaker or whatever the adventure creature is. So here, just get rid of a swamp. If they put their trigger right, they could have actually sacked both um, with the priest trigger. Chromatic Lantern, lines you control have, it's not the same effect. So if we had the Swamp, I could have played this out and done that. Since we don't, I think we just go, I think we just do Masker Girl. I can attack, but if they do block, then it kind of puts us behind. I do want to try to keep this for when I have a Swamp. Golos would be a good draw here. Um, I think I get rid of Ritual here. Dread Presence, perfect. So, attack in here. I'm going to just draw a card here, and then we'll set up for the following turn. Um, let's just play this out. It's not massive, but it's another thing that can block, and then at, at the very least I can start putting some pressure on them. Hey Gabber Cube, how's it going? Running some uh, mono black golos today. Karn would be good, golos would be good. Got quite a few options. Liliana or Ugin for card advantage. Okay, so they will be able to, in theory, get Croxa back this next turn. So I think we just be aggressive here. 
And then I can crank up Lasso into two. And then that can deal with the Croxa if they hit their land. Hey Shaka Blade, yeah, um, you can find the link in any of my YouTube videos. Uh, I have it if you are ordering anything off TCG. Uh, if you can follow the link, it'd be awesome if you could. You ordering any of the new set? I think we're in a pretty good spot. We'll take three off this Croxa. But um, crank up Blast Zone, pop it to kill the Croxa. They've exiled a lot of cards from the graveyard. And then we go from there. Ooh, Ashiok's also nice. So what I can do... Sack Blast Zone. Play out Ashiok. Exile both their Croxas. And then just swing for a bunch. They can trade here, but then they're taking seven. They're dead to any land off the top. And then that's just taking out the uh, the two Croxas in the yard is good. So no Golos this game. Game one, we had the Golos with uh, pretty lackluster activation. We paid seven mana for a Liliana. Um, so here they're just dead. Play this out. They have to. This has menace, so they're gonna take the damage anyways. So they can block here, but then they can't double block on Masker Girl, and then they're dead. Sweet. We did the thing. It worked. Um, I think same game plan this turn. Um, really need to draw the Karn. Um, if we can get the ways to shut off the graveyard, it works. Having the Ashiok as a backup plan is also nice. They stumbled a bit on mana, but Massacre Girl was a nice way to put pressure on them after a board wipe. Um... Let's try this. It's a bit slow. I do have, okay, so no turn one plays good. They play like a two drop, I Murderous Rider it, and then I have Ashiok down tick. I do think I might play this out as a two two. It gives me something to block this turn. Um. I think we get rid of the swamp. Uh, uh, don't worry about it, Shaka Blade. It's been a while. Like I haven't heard much from them. Um, they let a lot of people go from TCG a while back, and they used to get like weekly status updates. Appreciate it though. I'll uh, I'll follow up with uh, Andre from Aether Hub. See, they push it through uh, the Aether Hub links. Okay, so they have Priest. I'm gonna kill the Priest. Uh, so this is interesting. Because... So I can Murderous Rider here, which is better mana-wise. But then I can't get rid of a Mayhem Devil. Whereas I can do this... But then I can't do that next turn. Let's see what they do next turn, and then I'll decide how I want to approach. Obviously, the more mana efficient way is uh, Murderous Rider this, and then Ashiok. Okay, since they're doing that. 
Let's do this. We get in an attack, but unless they have a sacrifice outlet in hand, which doesn't look like it. Ah, they got the oven. And a Croxa. Ha. <sighs> So they're probably sacrificing my stone coil. So I unfortunately have to get rid of the Golos here. Are they gonna sack it? Perfect. Cause then what I can do here is, oh, great. So if I disfigure here, actually they can just pop this back. So they do get it back, but it's fine. We still get rid of two Croxas. And then I can play out this Murderous Rider, gain me some life. They are probably going to be incentivized as well to attack into Ashiok. <sighs> what a draw. You have one mana, you draw exactly Witch's Oven, so they're dealing two damage to us each turn, at least, depending if they attack Ashiok or not. They're opting to go face here. So Ritual's not that good. Still think we just exile stuff off the top. Thins out their deck. So we can do it twice. They get some. Uh, we can attack in for two at least each turn to offset that damage. Then if I can get a line for Golos would be good. Those Croxus were a bit of a pain. Okay, they're keeping it out just in case. They drew Mayhem Devil. Don't think we've hit any Mayhem Devils yet. The one thing with Murderous Rider is it's weak to claim. You've seen one claim. So with my luck, they're going to draw a card with this, get exactly claim, then go from there. Okay, not bad. Ah, so the one thing is with the cauldron familiar, they can block and um, prevent me the life gain. So I do need to hold this back. So I do need to find a way to try to gain some life back. I can play Golos next turn. Golos gets me Scryland. Problem is with double oven, they can get around that damage. Okay, I go Calls of the Dead. Get some zombie. If I draw Karn, I can graft Digger's Cage. Nope. Let's see if they don't block properly. So they got a sack here. Your 
So here they gotta, if they want this cap back, they need to pop it out. Don't think we have it though. Like I can ritual here, they pop one cat out and then they do the two damage. Too slow there, too slow. Rakdos is gonna be a tough one. Like we could, if we, surprised we played two games there. I'm just gonna restart Arena really quick. Three games, never drew Karn. The temper, like the timing of those Karaxas hurt a lot. We'll fire it up for another one though. I think we could probably do pretty good against like Bat mid ramp or something, just having a lot of removal. So in those games when you do have Karn, because Karn shuts off Oven, so they can't activate Oven, and then you fetch a Graft Digger's Cage, then they can't get anything out of the graveyard, so you kind of lock them out that way. The nice thing is, even playing unranked right now, you're playing tier decks, so it's a good way to test out without losing your rank. I gotta double check, yesterday I was like 190 on the ladder. Um, sounds a little awkward, but sure, give it a shot. I want to swamp here, just so my hand plays out normally. Because especially a mulligan, or yeah, a mulligan off bent, perfect. So don't want ritual here. This is most likely the the bent mid ramp deck. Perfect. So I'm gonna agonizing remorse over Fenlurker. Let's get to fairy. This gives me the choice of what I hit. This doesn't. Fairy also could bounce this, which we don't want. Okay, so I do have Karn which can get me a Golos the following turn. So yeah, let me do that, because this lets me go next turn Karn, go get Golos, and then um, go from there. Weird sequencing, they could have, oh no, they didn't have the extra mana to grow Spiral. And then they have Uro. All the mana in the world. Having Ritual against uh, Anissa decks pretty good. So we're weak, obviously, if they drop Nisa this turn, we lose this Karn. They have something, okay, so they crisis for five. One, two, three, four, five. So I could Liliana down tick. I think we just get Golos going. Yeah, I think we get Golos going. So let's grab um, let's grab cage because that shuts off this Uro. Uh, so I already have the castle. Et extinction is great. That can deal with like a Nisa if it comes down. So they can take Karn off the battlefield, I don't care. If they hit us for five this turn, that's also fine. If they play Nisa out, I can ritual away their creature as well, attacking with Golos. So I think we ritual a Soot. It gets rid of the Crisis. 
just play out the defensive blocker and then play out another Golos. This lets us get another land. Computer's been doing a little like glitch. Um, do I want the lands? Probably. We got a lot of action in hand. So I think we actually locked them out pretty well this game. Ah, Conquer's death's kind of annoying. It hits the Golos. So that does shut off, thankfully, um, Conquer's death's ability. Uh, the the Graph Digger's Cage. So I'm going to get rid of the last card in their hand, and then we're going to play Liliana out. Ooh, getting rid of Dream Trawler is nice. Like, we did have an answer to it in Liliana. Okay, so they can scry here. But between Fenlurker eating at their hand, we have the C to Extinction and the Liliana putting pressure. They could have something. Oh, there's another Conqueror's Death. Okay, well, we're still hitting him for five a turn. So I think we want to put this up to five right now. I'm gonna just put this out so we can start. Now uh, I'll wait a turn. Just see with that, because if I can get this to five, I'm worried about Nisa. Mind you, we do have an answer for the first Nisa that comes down. Okay, so they bought them both. Interesting, because they topped both the last time. Cage shuts that off. So Cage is doing some work for us. Nice. Lee can't be targeted. So I think I'm going to draw a card... Our life total is pretty high, so I can afford it right now. Perfect. One, two, three, four. So put two counters on this. So Golos going to find us utility lands. Came in clutch at least. Liliana does cost a lot of mana. Let's drop Fen Lurker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm going to decline this since we can't hit the card anyways. Play out Liliana and then just make another token. So we should have him like this. Karn was really useful this game, just getting us the Golos first and then the Cage to shut them off. Cage does a really good job here. We shut off this, shut off that. The only thing about being mono black is you don't get um, Glass Casket for the Hydrate Crisis. Yep, shut that down. So even if the opponent wipes the board here with Shatter, I draw four cards. This could be named to fairy. Bounce the cage. Oh. Conquer's death. Conquer's death, my conquer's death. Alright, well, you've exiled everything I love. Uh. 
Um, how many pumps can I do? So it's two, four, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I can do four. So it's five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I have lethal. That's how we plan to win, right? Uh, Yark, Fen Lurker, pump four times. Opponent spending wild cards on tier one decks. So in this matchup, uh, bringing in the duress, bringing in the noxious grasps, cutting. So cling to dust is good. Agonizing remorse is nice. Fen Lurker is nice. Uh, probably trim some of these Dread Presents, to be honest. They just get hit by Conqueror's Death. They don't do much otherwise. Uh, and Massacre Girl's also not that good. Just run it like that. Try to win through just, like, attrition-based damage. We can fetch this from the side. At least on the play, I want to attack their hand more often. Probably, yeah, let's try it like that. Worst case, if we have Karn active, it can just start dealing them damage. I can always just fetch Meteor Golem to deal to be a 3 3 for 7 mana. Don't want five lines. So. I'd prefer Agonizing Remorse over the Fen Lurkers, but going double discard spell into a Murderous Rider should be pretty good. So they don't have Accelerant on two, which is nice. They get rid of a land. Would like to draw into a Karn here. Ask and you will be rewarded. So let's attack in first. They usually don't play Brazen Borrower and wouldn't make sense for them to bounce it, but. Okay, so hit a Nisa. Also a nice way to hit. So next turn. I'd probably just go get the cage to start off with. We don't have Golos or um, Lantern. Yeah, especially if they Tamiyo here. So they get an Uro to hand. Um, I was kind of hoping for a land drop. Because then, yeah, I still think we just do this now. Just before they could counter it. Cage was really good this last game. So I'm going to attack into this Tamiyo just to keep him honest, but I'm probably going to target it with like uh, the Rider. Not as worried about this being in the graveyard. I'd rather exile the creatures that are relevant. Okay, so they do hit Hydroid Crisis. Not too worried. We have two removal spells plus a ritual assist. Perfect. That means I get another activation of the Karn. And agonizing remorse. So before I decide, so let's play out the cage. 
like Tamiya would get one more activation if I do this. Which I still think is fine, because I could stop them off the card draw. So they have Conqueror's Death already, so it doesn't make a difference. I hit the the thing. I just don't want them to draw cards. Um Probably just get Golos. So here, if they want to pick up Uro or Nisa, they lose their Tamiya. So we'll see if they go that route. They just go Dream Trawler. Yikes. Well, that was a card we were hoping to duck. So I can... I need Liliana. They have to ferry as well. I wasn't paying attention to what they named. Okay, so we got the land. So I can go one, two on top. Because this is just going to be fodder. But I still think I do it just to get a scry. I know they're going to Conqueror's Death it. But I really need to try to find uh, Liliana. Because the problem is when they play this Teferi out, then I can't uh, instant speed this. Maybe they do get greedy, but they can tefer uh they can also Teferi Uro. Missed too many line drops. They kept in mystical dispute. Seems a bit odd. Okay, they're going after Karn. Karn for Stone Coil isn't bad. They're going to Fairy here. I guess if I draw a land, I can eat to extinction and to fairy. And um, murderous rider, this eat to extinction, this. Not the land I wanted. Okay, it's not bad. So obviously going to have a hard time racing this right now. Taking this off so I can deal some damage. Next turn I have two removal spells hopefully for this Dream Trawler. Again just bringing this down to three. If they want to minus they lose it. 28 cards. Ashiok off the top wouldn't be too bad. that they play Uro. I'm dead. Because the ritual is going to be too slow this turn. Okay. So we'll uh, get back at them. Um, can probably shave two rituals for two dread presents. Go from there. 
question is, do I want Do I want the stone coil? No. Nah. To be honest, I think what we do next time is that same interaction. It was wrong to get Karn. Or with uh, it was wrong to get Golos, we should have got the stone coil. Nope. Sure. Gonna go Dreddy to the bottom. So really want to hit a land here. Tef or Conquer's Death. I think we get rid of Tef. More of an immediate issue. They're going to grow Spiral into the Scry Land. Perfect. So I'm just going to get Ashiok going. I have this Cling to Dust. They can't Nisa next turn, and they can't um, Conquer's Death, so I get two activations out of it. Hopefully exile some key pieces here. That was actually very good. An Uro, a Nisa, and a Teferi. So we've taken down two Teferis. Ideally want to hit a Dream Trawler. Uh, hoping for a land so I can go get Cage. And then they have to decide if they want to get rid of the Karn or the Ashiok. Okay, so they do have to ferry. Make a cycle here. Cool. Why do they have Aether Gust in against us? That makes no sense. Like, I understand not having cards for the matchup, but it literally hits nothing in our deck. Um, so let's go get the Cage. So next turn, I can Murderous Rider this and Cage. They have this, so they have to decide what they want to hit here. They go after Karn. It's a decent draw. Um, I do think I want Teferi out of here. We're dead either way to Nisa land. Activated land, so... Just play out these. The fairy stops us from being able to instant speed, anyways. So next turn's probably just gonna be cling to dust, or sorry, a murderous rider. They're at thirty-four cards in their deck. They have to fairy, so this can be a speed bounce. Could be bounce conquers death, to be honest. Yeah. That's what it looks like. So, because they're going to target our Ashiok, good. Hit the Dream Trawler. Let's set up our Scry. Looking for some action here. So, here they can exile this Murderous Rider. I go after the Ashiok. That's fine, because now I can poke two damage into this Teferi. That's more like it. And then this will give a target for Cling to Dust after. So, let them react first. Agonizing Remorse was a nice draw. And then I can also draw a card with this. So we're going to get rid of the other Conqueror's Death. You can keep a Shatter if you want to one for one me. Ah, 
Ashiok did a really good job of disrupting them that game this turn. I I still don't understand why they have Aether Gust. I don't know what they think our deck is. So let's use a castle. Perfect. It's a little awkward here because it conquers death's um, stat or ability, makes Liliana something we can't cast this turn. But it did help out our opponent taking four lands off the top. <laughs> We're going with the mill plan this game. Okay, you got Uro. The nice thing is if they do play Teferi at any time before it resolves, I can just cling to dust. Actually, I'll probably do it now. Uh, do I care about the cart? No, I'll probably wait on this. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. They, they could potentially have Mystical Dispute up. So I might just be cautious. Liliana is how we win this game, so I don't want to be overzealous. It's also a way I can get around a Hydroid Crisis that resolves by sacking it. Yeah, opponent's hand's not doing much for them. Draw another card here. So looking for really just removal at this point. The Remorse is interesting, but I don't think we play it. Because at this point, they just use Liliana or they just use whatever removal they have if they have another Conqueror's Death on Liliana. They also have 14 cards. Okay, they bottom bottom. So now I'm going to mill them. There are 14, so we can take them out. Oh, oh, wow. That was nice. Two Conqueror's Death, a Dream Trawler, and a Hydroid Crisis. Yeah. Hydro Crisis they also can't cast now because they risk milling out. Sweet. This deck was pretty cool. Um, obviously, like, hyper-aggressive uh, uh, hyper decks will be an issue, but overall I was quite impressed. All right, so I'm going to wrap this one up. Um, I will be here this weekend brewing up some decks for Ikoria. Um, I'll be, I have a couple posted on my Aether Hub already if you want to catch those. Uh, if you have any suggestions for decks or decks you've brewed up, I'm doing the early streamer event, so swing by, drop in uh, your deck list, I'll take a look. I'm going to try to be playing some viewer uh, decks as well. 